Bro, you're, you're kind of different with it. Bro. My career has played out pretty crazy. Like, my highlight reel is absolutely insane. Bro, when you're in there, do you hear the crowd? Like, what are you thinking? People don't understand how fast I am. Wait till I'm in front of your face, and I'm kicking you in the stomach, and you didn't know, and then I'm punching you in the face, and I'm fainting at you, and then I'm behind you. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's insane. What's your KD? Not great. It sucks that I'm still not that good. Like, I'm like fuck, I've been gaming for so long, bro. But I just, I love Call of Duty, dude. Would you ever get a skin in the game? Imagine pink shorts running around with the dude. UFC gloves. Yeah. That would be hard. What is going on, guys? Face Swag here. Got my boy Ty and Matt as my co-host. And today, joining the lobby is going to be the world champion, Sean O'Malley, man. Yeah. Let's go. Yes, sir. Oh, my Thank God. Thank you for the lobby, Sean. Yeah, of course, of course. Thank you guys for coming out. So kind of tell me about, like, uh, why why Phoenix? So when I was 18, I was I originally was going to move to California because I had to get out of Montana, from Montana, born and raised. And I had to get out of there to train somewhere else. Montana, they don't have pro gyms, they don't have pro fighters. Montana. Yeah, you can't, you can't like make it in Montana. There was a guy named Tim Welch who was from Great Falls, an hour away from me, who was fighting on Bellator fight, like a fight master TV show. Yeah. So he was fighting on TV and I'm like, this guy's from, he lives like, he lived in Montana. And uh, I was like, that's fucking crazy. But he was living in Phoenix. He moved down here to train. And he went back to Great Falls to commentate a fight. And I was 18 years old, and I armbarred this kid. And Tim, after the fight, said, like, yo, if you want to train at a real gym, like, you can come down and, and check it out. I was calling him the next day. I might have been calling him that night, but like, I'm ready to go. Like, I, I just wanted to make it so bad. And, uh, yeah, the next, the next day, we ended up, I ended up getting flights. A couple weeks later, flew down to Phoenix and uh, trained for 10 days. Got my ass whooped literally every day. Cried every single day because <laughs> I didn't realize the levels of this shit. Yeah, yep. I'm in Montana beating these dudes' asses. Yeah. And then I come to Phoenix and I'm like, damn, I'm not where I thought I was. So, you know, we trained for 10 days, went back to Montana, saved up $2,000, uh, worked full time, saved up money, packed my car, my Nissan, 2006 Nissan Altima, still got it. Hey. Let's go. Drove down 20 hours by myself. And uh, Tim and I ended up getting an apartment together. And now he's my coach, best friend, and fucking we're here. How long do you feel like it took you for your skill level to adjust to, like, the guys in, outside of Montana? Um, I, I was always scrappy. I just had that, like, that dog in me. I was yeah. scrappy, and I, could, and I was good at kickboxing. I was always good at striking. Like, yeah. naturally, was just good at striking. So what I was behind in was wrestling and jiu-jitsu. Yeah. And that took me a good two, three years to kind of wow. get up to decent wrestling. I mean... <laughs> Yeah, wrestling's a hard, grindy sport. And if you people have been doing it their entire lives. Yeah, Ty wrestled. He wrestled a little bit, too. I wrestled, bro. Honestly, I wasn't going to speak on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and because, bro, I'm like, yo, I wrestled in middle school and freshman year, and I'm in here with somebody that... But I'm glad you said that, bro, because people just think, like, even when I'm wrestling around with my boys and uh -huh. I'm strong or whatever, bro, it's just technique, like risk control. Yeah, yeah. It goes such a long way. You feel what I'm saying? Basic technique shits. So yeah. Yeah, wrestling's wild. like... I, I have super underrated wrestling, I started wrestling late, and I'm not like I have more MMA wrestling rather than just fucking yeah. wrestling match. So, in in my next opponent, possibly Marab is is on a ten fight win streak and is literally just re out wrestles everyone, gets a hold. Oof. He's boring as hell. He's ugly as fuck, but he's just <laughs> and he's just he just grabs a hold of people, out wrestles them. So so going out there and knocking someone out like that's gonna feel good. Oh yeah, people don't understand when you're just wrestling and like stationary. How much energy is yeah. being exerted, bro? It's insane. To not get like taken, like to like just fight to like them off. maintain position or yep. like try to take over is crazy. Yeah, wrestling's fucked, bro. It's, that's a that's a grindy sport. Yeah. I mean, bro. So you just beat Cheeto. Congrats, beat his ass, bro. bro. You He's your still title. talking shit, bro. <laughs> I know that's crazy. Wild. He's saying I was greasing my hair and shit. Like he's he went on the MMA hour today. Saying I was every time he tried to grab me, and he's just getting roasted. Of course, yeah, he I'm got like, cooked. Holy shit, dude! So he's saying he put you put he grease, said in, I hair, grease so like in my hair, bro. When I got my hair braided, I'm like the day before, and then I rinse it off, like rinse my hair. I was like, bro, what? No one greased my fucking hair, and you could like there's pictures of me in the octagon, like my hair don't look greasy. Yeah. He's fucking yeah, wild, but he did get concussed pretty bad. So yeah, you destroyed him. I'm not even gonna lie, that was that was dominant. That's like, crazy. congratulations. I yeah, got to tell yeah. you a person, bro. That like, kick was vicious. Yeah. Knee to the lips. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Bro, how does it feel when, like, you're in the octagon? Like, obviously, we see it as, like, viewers. 
Well, bro, when you're in there, do you hear the crowd? Like, what are you thinking? Like, how is that? It's, I, it's, I've never been able to put it into words on like what it feels like, but it's, I'm, it's the most calm I can ever. It's the most calm I ever am, for, and it's a weird time to be the most calm I ever am. But That's it's crazy. like, yeah. I feel like I just truly get into the flow. What people say, the flow where you're not really thinking, mm. and I'm just living in it. So it's like I don't really know what I'm. It can't. It's hard for me to recall what I was thinking about because I just really wasn't just thinking. But there is feel. there is moments where you have random thoughts <laughs> in the fight. And I did have a few. I remember whooping his ass in like fourth or fifth round and, and thinking like he's still dangerous. Like still got to be careful. Still yeah. got to execute. Still got to focus on my game plan. And uh, so you had random thoughts like that. And there was one time I punched him in the fifth round and his eyes were like cross-eyed. And he was like, couldn't see. And I started pointing like this. And I wish I said it so fucking bad and I didn't, but I had another random thought. I wanted to tell him his eyeball fell out. I'm like, bro, that, you know, I wanted to tell him his eyeball and fell out. And he's like, starts checking. He would have been like, that, bro, because he was so fucked up, he might have believed me. <laughs> oh my God. He's got a fucked up eye anyway. You're thinking oh, that yeah, mid fight is crazy. Like, I just yeah. Ran, it was weird because I only had a few thoughts. So thoughts like staying disciplined, stay focused, and then think, telling him his eyeball fell out. Those were like a couple <laughs> thoughts I had. <laughs> oh, that's insane. But I remember seeing like Donald Trump there. I remember pointing at him. Mm, that's fire. Um, this time I didn't really, I remember seeing Trump, but. Sometimes I can really vividly remember seeing, like I remember seeing Steve at the fight. Steve's yeah. a fucking huge, you know, fan. He's always at the fights. But sometimes I remember seeing random people. Trump's daughter. I was like, who's this fucking dime piece? I was like, <laughs> God damn. I was like, whoo. I remember seeing her thinking that. But Yo, for the most part, dude, I'm not really. I I just am so focused on the goal, on the mission at hand, and it's life or death in there. Like, of course, bro, I don't want to. You know, I'm not trying to fucking get knocked out. So I just. The less thinking, the better. Have you ever been uh, knocked out? Like, not even like UFC, but just fighting your whole life in general. Have you ever been slept training, anything? Uh, not not knocked out cold. The hardest I was ever hit probably was when Cheeto, the first fight, the elbow. After okay. I fucking went down, after whoop his, whooping his ass and my fucking foot gave out. Yeah, what? So what happened with that? So there's a nerve right, right behind your knees called your perennial nerve. People are like, oh, he kicked your calf. I'm like, bro, my calf's right here. He didn't kick shit. Yep. Well, I did kick my fucking nerve. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so you, I kicked my nerve and you get drop foot. So you can't lift your foot like this. You oh, completely man. lose. So every time I'd walk forward, I'd roll oh, my I've ankle. I've seen it look like you were about to roll your shit. Yeah, I, I rolled it like eight shit. times in Damn, the fight bro. and I kept rolling it, bro. <sighs> that shit looks so But my bad. ankle wrap was so tight and I was telling my coaches before, I'm like, can we loosen my ankle wraps up? These are too tight. And then he kicks the nerve and then sometimes, like that happens in fights rant every once in a while. Someone get their nerve kicked, but it'll come back. My shit wasn't coming back. I swear it was because that ankle wrap was too tight. But I said for three and a half years, I'm like, that motherfucker got lucky. There's, he beat me nine, like nine out of ten times I beat this motherfucker. He got lucky as fuck. And for me to go out there and, and just like put a statement on it, like I told nice. you motherfuckers because I got... Wasn't even close. I got shit for years saying I'm undefeated. I said, that motherfucker didn't beat me because his skills are better than me. And they're like, yeah, they did. I'm like, watch. And I never, I didn't know if I was going to get that fight back. I could have called for that fight whenever I wanted. UFC yep. would have made it happen. I said, that motherfucker has to earn a fight against me. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it just made sense to defend my title for the first time against him. And uh, so it worked out. It's crazy how full circle it worked out. But I told yeah, motherfuckers, awesome. I said, I'm going to, I'm better than that motherfucker. And I, like I the way, uh, it. Rogan worded it, just outclassed. Outclassed. Just outclassed, yeah. bro. Yeah. Felt good. You know what I think is the coolest shit, bro? That you come out to Lupe Fiasco. Superstar. Song. Yeah. Superstar. Yo, like, and just the psyche. Like, I remember, like, this was, like, years ago. It was probably, like, four fights ago. And I remember, like, hearing that song. And then they were already talking about your story. And that's before, like, yeah. I'm really, like, yo, who is this kid? Uh -huh. And, like, yo, the this, this song, like, bro, if you are who you really say you yeah. are, a superstar, like, bro, the cameras are here, the lights are on. I'm like, yep. bro, show us. Yep. You came oh, out there and just put shit down, bro. That's, that's insane. Yeah, that's what I pride myself on is every single fight – except for that one fight against Cheeto, I'm like, I show up. I know how to show up. I know what day. I know what time. And I'm going to fucking show up. And I know how to show up and perform. Bro. Yeah. So, Ilya. Ilya was... Thinking, Ilya, I mean, I'm, gonna, I'm going to Vegas actually tomorrow to talk to UFC. Uh, yeah, Ilya or Marab, I, I'm, I'm happy with either one. I, I called out Ilya thinking the fans would be like, yo, that's, that's hard. That was cold. Yeah. You're fucking crazy for that. That was. They're like, no, nah, fuck that. You want you to fight Marab. I'm like, you're like, whatever, I, I, I don't on. mind fighting Marab. I'd rather fight Marab. People think I'm ducking Marab. I'm like, dude, I Marab is not nearly as scary. You tell me I'm fighting Ilya, I'm going to be laying in bed going, all right, we got to get into this motherfucker. But I'm, if I, Marab's not an easy fight by any means, but he's just not as scary. If I go out there and lose to Marab, it'll be fucking embarrassing because he'll probably hold me for five rounds and it'll be like, whatever. Going out there and losing to Ilya, you get 
you get your lights shut the fuck out. Like, that's scarier than losing a five-round fucking getting held down or some, you know. So, I I don't care. Either one, Mirab or Elia. I think it's looking like it'll be Mirab. But, I'm again, I'm going to Vegas tomorrow, talk to UFC, and uh, get some clarification. Facts. That's exciting. Bro. Yeah. Also, oh, yeah. in the past, bro, you said that uh, Conor McGregor is one of your inspirations. Facts. So, like, what's your, like, relationship with him? And, like, do you feel like you're reaching that Conor McGregor level? Yeah, it's crazy. I remember being on the contender series before I got into the UFC telling people, I'm like, I'm going to be bigger than Connor. And like, I would kind of get laughed at. And when I, what I, I get that too. It was like delusion because of like, for me to actually be bigger than Connor, my career has to play out pretty fucking crazy. Yeah. My yeah. career has played out pretty fucking crazy. Like, yeah. my highlight reel is absolutely insane. Champ, defended the belt. Like, I'm on my way. For sure. Yeah. I have more title defenses than Connor. He never defended the belt. You know what I mean? But Connor's such a legend and like, I still got a lot of work to do to get there, but I've been saying it, and I'm that much closer. So I, you know, I still feel like I'm going to be bigger than Connor someday. When COVID came around 2020, UFC grew like 40. Yeah, percent there was crazy. no growing, sports wow. going on. There was no sports, football, basketball, nothing was on. UFC was on. So you're telling me I, and there's people like, no, you, there's it's impossible to be bigger than Connor. Like the sport is 40 percent bigger. I'm in, I'm not even in my prime yet. I'm 29. I guess you could say I'm in my prime. I still got, you know, three, four, five years. Like, I go knock out Mirab. I go knock out Ely. You're telling me I'm not bigger than Connor at that point? That's crazy. Facts, yeah. You'd be that, that double mean, champ, man. That would be, be crazy. Yeah. Yeah. He's got a ring to it. He's got a ring yeah. to yeah. double champ. Yeah, yeah. Double champ, bro. And, like, obviously, Connor fought Floyd. Yep. You know, like, would you ever go into, like, boxing? Yeah, I mean, I've I've brought it up. I've planted the seed. I've said what I needed to say about the boxers. You know, Ryan, Gervonta, Floyd, whatever. But right now, obviously, I'm focused on just being the greatest of all time in the UFC. I planted that seed. If that happens in three, four, five years and it's a crazy money fight, let's go. If it never happens, I'm not going to be mad about it. Yeah, but I've said yeah. what I needed to say just to plant the seed. It gets talked about every time I do any interview. It gets brought up. So yeah. it, I did what I needed to do with that. Ryan Garcia seems like he's absolutely on fucking crazy yeah, drugs. And what, he's, bro, he's, tweaking. he's not doing he's I, and it's, tweaking. I, it's more sad than anything at this point. I'm like, this motherfucker needs help, dude. Yeah, he needs help. He's I think he's an alcoholic. I think he's on drugs. It's like, bro, and then you're gonna go fight Devin Haney. Yeah, does he fight in a couple like like soon, April 20th? Right? He's gonna go fight Devin wow, Haney, who's God. supposedly real good. I say supposedly because I've never seen him fight, but I guess he's like Floyd, like he's fucking sick. Crazy. But, yeah. <laughs> he's good. Yeah. yeah, but for Ryan to call me out in MMA, it's like that shows he's on drugs. Like that's not even competitive. Yeah, like, at all. I'm there for it. Like if someone wants to pay me to do it, I'm down. But that's just not not realistic. Facts, yeah. And like, what are your thoughts on like you know Jake Paul against Mike Tyson? Like, what are your predictions yeah. on that fight? I've been on the Jake Paul train. I love seeing that shit. People hate on it. I'm I like, I'm it there for it. I'm gonna sit on my fucking it's couch. Just hype, I'm gonna bro. buy yeah. the pay per view. Man. Jake versus Nate. <laughs> Bro, I was hyped for that shit. Jake, Jake versus Ben Askren, I was there. Oh. Um, so I, I like that stuff. I don't mind the celebrity fighting. Call it what you want. The Mike Tyson one, it's like, shit, I'm going to watch. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about Mike Tyson being 57. I, unless it's like, all right, Mike, you can be on testosterone. You can be on juice. You can train. You know what I mean? If yeah. he's not on that shit. Bro, how, he's 57. How are you going to fucking train? Yeah, I mean, I've been seeing it. He posted a couple of clips, and he's looking vicious. Well, kind of but it's like, is it are those... Like uh, up to date videos, or it was like from when he was fight fought Roy Jones Jr. I can't tell. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> I, tell think, you. I think they're up the to old date. clips. <laughs> I think they're up to date. I think somebody would have identified if it wasn't. But that I'm glad you spoke on like the Tyson thing. But like you said, bro, you're going to tune in regardless. Yeah, I'm I watch think it. that's what makes you so appealing as a fighter, is bro. Like that knockout power. This yeah. fight could be over in 30 seconds. Yep. it just draws people. You know what yeah. I'm saying? People so, want to see me lose, too. That's why oh, Floyd sure. was so big. You yeah. People want literally just wanted to see him lose. They he tune lose. in to watch him lose. It's I feel like I have more people that want to see me win, but I have a good amount of haters that are just... Some, like, people hate confidence. Like, insecure people hate confidence. Yeah. So when they see this fucking skinny kid with colorful hair, face tattoos, <laughs> just confident as a motherfucker, they're like, fuck that guy. For what reason? I don't really know, but fuck that guy. Yeah, like, that's just you, how insecure people are. Yeah, how do you deal with the, like, because even, like, a after Fight with Cheeto, like, back in the day, when you had her, oh, yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, just dealing with haters in general, like, how do you kind of uh, approach it and just overall, from, like, a mental standpoint, does it bother you a little bit at all? Not really, or? It, it, it weirdly that fight, like, that shit didn't bother me too much because I felt like someday I was going to get this fight back. And yep. I knew I was going to whoop his ass if I fought him. So I, it never really bothered me because I didn't feel like I lost skill for skill. I'm like, fuck, it just played out weird. Um, but to deal with the haters or whatever, I was just, like, locked in and fucking went back to work and 
Yeah, I mean, my next fight after that against Thomas Almeida I had a crazy fucking fight, like crazy highlight reel. The whole fight was a highlight reel. Yeah. Then after that, I fought that green-haired kid that just did. It was insane. It was insane. Yeah. Like, guys had <laughs> such crazy back to back to back. Like each fight was just getting crazier and crazier. So I was like, you know, I, I never, I didn't, I didn't really let the haters bother me too much. Never really kind of affected me. Yeah, the Sterling one. I was talking to I was talking to the boys about it, yeah. man, because he, he was talking so crazy, and then you just put him <laughs> out. I was like, "Yo, this is insane." Yeah, like, yeah. Yo, this, I understand. Yeah, you got to talk. You got to like. You yeah. feel what I'm saying? Build it up. He was talking reckless though. Like, yo, this is the what do we call it? The prima donna, the he was UFC talking, or something. <laughs> well, the thing about Aljo is like he was trying to. He was truly, truly confident. For me, Aljo Sterling was the hardest matchup in the division. Yeah. And for him, it was not the easiest matchup, but one of the easier ones. Again, I haven't grappled my whole life. I didn't wrestle my whole life. So he thought he was going to come in and grab a hold of me real easy. Mm -hmm. People don't understand how fast I am. Like, you see me on TV, and you're like, oh, fuck, he's fast. Wait till I'm in front of your face, and I'm kicking you in the stomach, and you didn't know, and then I'm Scary, punching you in the face, and I'm fainting at you, and then I'm fucking behind you. And you're just like, fuck. And, and it's different when I'm in front of people. But he, he was talking some crazy shit, but uh, that, that one felt good. I like watching the... The highlights of like the lead up to that fight, him yeah. saying he's gonna expose me and he's gonna take <laughs> yeah. me out. And uh, now, yeah, Mrab, his boy, is like, oh, I hope Aljo's in the corner when I sleep Mrab too. <laughs> Fuck those guys. This is gonna be great, bro. It's gonna be great. I love it, bro. Fuck yeah. That's awesome. So, like, uh, leading up to the fights and stuff like that, kind of, I'll come on and talk about like your just your training overall, like what it's like in camp. You know, your nutrition and yep. stuff like that, like kind of go into a little bit about that. Yeah. So, I fucking, I pretty much all year round, I'm dialed in i'm eating clean i'm sleeping good um you know i i go out a little bit here and there sometimes i go through phases where i want to party a little bit more right now i feel like i have zero desire like i don't really care to party i want to get healthy i'm pretty healthy right now there's a couple bumps and bruises and get back to work but in camp i like to do 12 weeks three months of just fucking you know got my nutritionist dan garner we talked a little bit about him just an absolute scientist bro a fucking genius does my stool stool like shit Blood, hair, saliva, piss, wow. all that, yes. and and analyzes it. Does whatever the fuck he does. Figures out what 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 foods causing me inflammation, what nutrients I'm lacking, and uh, so he'll send me a whole supplement list. Of, hey, you need all this, and then uh, a, a diet plan. Eat this, and it's like it's just fucking dialed in. So we'll do that from like twelve to eight weeks. Will be a certain plan. Eight to four weeks will be another plan. Four weeks to the fight will be another plan. So I just have that dialed into the, like that's next level shit that I don't that's think a lot of people level, are bro. doing. Bro, yeah. Even and I, from like a hydration standpoint, yeah. like I see, bro, like obviously you understand you got to hydrate, you got to drink yeah. water. But I seen that you even do the pink salt in the morning as far as like that's really what does the hydration for you. Like that's the difference between yeah. just drinking a glass of water and drinking a glass of water with like the like the sodium and the minerals. And it yeah. goes such a long way in the way you feel, correct? Well, just quality water. You just get that tap too. water, shit water. I get this Mountain Valley spring water supposedly i mean i i don't i'm not i feel like i'm not like that smart where i could tell you why i drink i, I listen to the smart people and, yeah, and yeah, uh yeah. you know and and they tell me and then i just trust them so i could be dumb as fuck and trusting them but <laughs> i trust people that i i think are you know that are definitely way smarter than me but yeah drinking good quality water adding adding electrolytes aminos shit like that to your water is super important especially in phoenix especially how much we sweat definitely. and in camp so just staying up hyd on hydration, diet, that's huge. Sleep's probably the number one thing. You go train twice hard as fuck. Then you're on your phone at 1130 and you're scrolling and it's midnight and you're like, eh, and you fucking jack off. Then you're fucking, <laughs> then you lay down, you sleep, you wake up at 730 and your sleep's like shit. So got my sleep fucking pretty dialed in. How many like, hours you get? Yeah, eight to nine hours that's a night. Good. And Fire. it's it's good quality sleep. But uh, I've been doing, I've been on that since I've been just like on the sleep grind for like eight years, like yeah. a long time since I got wow. in the UFC. And uh, so sleep, diet, hydration, and then obviously training. Brandon Harris, my strength and conditioning coach, work with him two to three times a week, making sure my, you know, lifting so my, my joints and my muscles and my tendons are strong so I'm not getting injured as much. Before him, I would get injured all the fucking time. I just, I don't know if I had have the best genes. I, I didn't have proper lifting technique. Yeah. I just, you know, would get injured a lot and been working with him. I've, I got injured way less. Um, but yeah, I, I, I do, uh, most of my training is, is grappling, jujitsu, uh, and just wrestling, stuff like that. 
hit mitts a couple times a week. And then when I'm in camp, I spar once a week. But when I'm out of camp, like, I don't, I don't spar. I don't. As far as, like, weight training goes, like, I heard you were pretty strong, you know, from, like, the videos that you post and stuff like that. They said, like, you could deadlift, like, 400 no, pounds No, no, that wasn't me. Like that. That. I fought someone that deadlifted oh, 410. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah no, I, not my little ass. But I fought someone, Eddie Wineland. He was deadlifting, like, 420 pounds. Yeah, no, yeah, that's pretty good. And then I slept him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so I guess that didn't really help. So, so you don't think it correlates? <laughs> yeah. Um... It's good to be fucking strong. Yeah. I mean, it didn't help him too much, but Eddie was a cool motherfucker. Like, I, I like that guy. But I uh, I don't feel like I'm super strong in the weight room, and I'm not necessarily trying to, you know, get PRs and fuck. I'm just trying to make sure my body does what it needs to do, and I don't want to put on too much weight because yeah. I have to make weight. For sure. I have to make 135. I'm probably yeah. 158 right now. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. I don't want to go. I don't want to go lift heavy and fucking eat, and then I'm 160, 162, and I'm like, yeah. that's pointless for me. I want to stick around 57, 58. And so I can make 135. What's your like meal like like when you're like four weeks out from what give me a like a typical meal you yeah. have during the day? Like, Dude, I can tell you exactly. Yeah, what the I, fuck was, I, I was curious about that too. Like, like, what what you eat? Chicken, like, chicken thighs, no, no salt, no salt. <laughs> that like, that's that's season. like four days before the fight. This is you're talking like four weeks. Yeah. Let me see. Uh oh, there's a four week out plan right here. <laughs> no way. Um, you just pulled it up. Yeah. So like on Monday. Upon waking, I have a tablespoon of honey, 20 ounces of green tea, one tablespoon of chia seeds, and a fourth tablespoon of uh, pink salt. That's like instantly waking up. Yep. Egg, uh, for breakfast, one cup cooked oatmeal, one tablespoon flaxseed, half cup blueberries, eggs, egg whites, bell pepper, feta cheese. So that was like a little Ooh. omelet. So eggs from the... Yeah, eggs. I told him, because I told him <laughs> I, would, yeah, I need eggs every morning for breakfast. And he's like, done, we can make that happen. <laughs> But uh, then a post-workout lunch, six ounces of chicken breast, one cup of lentils, one cup steamed broccoli, two cups of greens, so like a little salad. Okay. Yeah, it's not too bad. And then dinner, six ounces of steak, six ounces of sweet potato, and a cup of asparagus. Then he has little snacks in between. But that that's a Monday. Um, and then I have this company, uh, the Recharge Center. Yeah. It's like, because Tim's Gym's 20, 25 minutes away, and the Recharge Center's in the same complex. Organic, quality meals. They're, they train at the gym. They're, they're friends, and they own their company, and, and they do meal plans. So... I have garnered talk to them Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I pick up meals and and uh, breakfast. I eat fresh every morning, but like lunch and dinner. I, I love that done. you said like the quality of what you're eating. Quality, like you know, quality everything. supplements and quality yeah. food. I feel like goes such a long way. Obviously, yeah. a lot of people don't know you have your own like chicken coop. Yo. That's the sickest yeah. thing Yo. ever. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. You just showed like, it what, to 12, us. 12 chickens? 14 chickens. That's yeah, insane. it's fun. I love it. We got randomly because we were staying. I, we we moved into this house like right after I slept Aljo. So August September we like moved he in here. That. Yeah. I gotta mention <laughs> that real quick. Second yeah. round. Uh, but uh, yes, yeah, so we were living. It. I had six chickens. We got them when they were like two weeks old. And uh, so we, in my, up at the other house, it's fucking dope. But it's not it's not like a it's not a place to raise chickens really. So I was like, fuck. What am I? I need to fucking find a, a farmhouse like this. So found this and, and brought my six chickens over here. And then these these guys already had chickens. They're like, we'll leave them. So, yeah, now we got 14 chickens and uh, a cow. Just a rent. The cow was supposed to be butchered. And we took her off the butcher list because I'm like, fuck. You, like, oh, it was like two weeks. That. I'm like, I, Tammy, I can't kill this bitch. So she's just out rant, roaming around. Just doesn't, living, bro. Doesn't, yeah, she's just. just I feel bad in the summer. There's bugs just flying all around her face. And I'm like, you do want me to kill you? Like, I'm like, <laughs> fuck. She looks miserable. They got them uh, little shits that go around the head. Shit, I can't get close eye. enough to her. Uh, she's, she's, not, she's not like aggressive, but she's not like. Yeah. She's not. Super yeah. friendly. They, they raised her knowing they were going to butcher her. So yeah, I don't think they were like, dang. you know, so she's not. Like, you can kind of touch her head a little bit, but you ain't getting shit on her face. Bro, I'm curious. Um, Obviously, you eat super healthy, but like, what's like a cheat meal? Like, what's like your. Yeah, I'll do. I'll do like in and out. That's as okay. far What's your as like order? What's your order? fast food. I'll just get like a couple double doubles and some animal fries. I love that. In yeah. and out people always say it's it overrated, man. It's not overrated. No, no, no I like far. it. I haven't had an in and out in a long time. Like I'm I low key wouldn't mind grabbing that tonight if you get it down. I'm down. Oh, I'm in. I haven't <laughs> had it in a long time. Usually like on a Monday I wouldn't do that, but this special occasion I just fought fuck it. But uh Hell yeah. Yeah, <laughs> in and out it would be a cheat. Um the other night I was actually craving in and out and I was like I'm just going to, so I went to Sprouts grocery store and got some, some just organic um, grass-fed beef, some organic cheese, nice. some good buns, just kind of made some some cheeseburgers up at the house and so I could indulge a little more without feeling as guilty. For but sure. uh, right. I'll have, yeah, I'll have, I'll make cheeseburgers, do a little cheat, maybe some nachos, but I try to keep it, if I do do a cheat meal, I try to just keep it still quality food. Gotcha. And just, yeah, it's fucking, That's 
Fire, bro. Yeah. So I'm curious how you two met. It was through Warzone, right? Yeah, so we got connected like uh, through Warzone. I was going to ask you, man, because recently we just ran together. We yeah, yeah. by like seven, fun. eight hours, seven, man. Seven, six hours, 48 minutes on mine. Yeah. <laughs> we dropped the, uh, his first nuke. Yeah, that shit. I didn't, I mean, like, when you said we we're going to get a nuke, I'm like, eh, we'll see. Like, nah, we, you guys we, got me that fucking nuke. We I still were, got two contracts. No way. Yeah, I'm still waiting to run it back, baby. I still got two contracts. We got to, man. <laughs> I think I want to know, like, as far as, like, your gaming history. Like, yeah. have you always been into, like, video games and Call of Duty? Like, because I started, yeah. my first ever Call of Duty was Modern for 3. That was the first one. Really? I started with MW2. Oh, shit. What was your first cop? Black Ops 2. Black Ops 2. Was World at War... Like before. before, before MW2 was it? Yeah, World yeah, of War is like Yo, was that what? The one I was that's talking about first OG zombies, zombies, right? Yeah. OG zombies, OG zombies, zombies bro. bro. That's when I've been gaming forever. I remember you started you know, back then. Oh yeah. Oh wow. I master seized every, all of. I, it is, sucks that I'm still not that good. Like, I'm like <laughs> I've been gaming for so long, bro. What's your KD? Not great. Not great. Well, I've been playing. I've been just running ranked, and I've been getting carried. So I've been. I'm in Crim three right now. And like I was telling you, we were in Aiden's lobbies yesterday, and he was just fucking just shit. Nah, he killed me, and then he's gone. I'm just like fuck. So I, I don't, I'm not not that good, but I just I love fucking Call of Duty, dude. I don't know Fortnite. I was addicted to Fortnite for like three years. Like Fortnite was good. It was, I broke, Fortnite was yeah, insane. I broke my foot. I had a Liz Frank surgery, which is like a pretty major major surgery in 2018, 2017, and I was f mid Fortnite, prime Fortnite. Oh, grinding, and, bro, that was crazy. Bro. I played. I did a 12 hour stream. I was doing like eight. I've been what? streaming for like seven, eight years too. No like word. I've been streaming for a long time. And uh, I just, yeah, I've loved Call of Duty since it came out. I think the first game I ever got addicted to was Halo. Uh, I remember, you, I was like the first time I realized you could play online, multiplayer, because I had an Xbox. I didn't realize when I first started gaming, so, I, I only played the campaign, and then one of my friends told me, like, you can play online against people. I said, <laughs> no yeah, way. Yeah, <laughs> same. Yeah, same. I was, I blew my fucking mind. Got an Ethernet, plugged that bitch in, I was on. <laughs> Talking shit, oh, playing, yeah, talking shit. Crazy. Crazy. Bro, what are your top three shit. CODs of all time? Start with three and then. End uh, up the best. Modern Warfare 2, is that, is that the one with Corey and like the yes. one man army? Yes. That yes. shit was probably my favorite. Like, oh, that, you were one of them? Yeah. Uh, the Noob 2, oh, one man army, army. Okay. Fruit Loose, fucking. Um, I loved the World at War. I loved that. I remember bumping Eminem CDs just fucking in my <laughs> basement fire. hours. Uh, and then Rebirth, like. I guess, oh just God. Warzone, like yeah, Rebirth, Warzone. that has got to be my favorite. Like Car 98, dude, I love oh running through God. prison, pulling up on a motherfucker, Mac Tan him in the face, yeah. bro. I miss Warzone hey. 1 so much. Yeah, that's It's coming back. Crazy. Rebirth is coming that's back what I'm next hearing. season. So. That's what I'm hearing, dude. I If they have Rebirth and Car 98 back, that's going to be an issue for You're me. You're going to be playing for, 12 hours a day. I'm going to be, gonna be, be an to issue camp, for me. I'm going to have to reschedule some shit. That would be fire, bro. Would you ever get a skin in the game? Bro, uh, Bro, imagine so pink tough. shorts running around with the Dude, UFC gloves. Yeah. That would be hard. That would be hard. That That's would be hard. crazy. No, a skin would be cool. But I think the first time I saw you playing, um, because I'd 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 watch like watch a r bunch of random people. Sometimes I'd watch Neo, Mercs, you. Yep. Like, I just kind of bounce around watching people. I feel like watching helps you get better for it sure, does. too. That's how I, that's how 100% I yeah. do, man. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, so I feel like watching, I try to watch, but sometimes, like, I'll be gaming for, like, three hours, and I'm like, all right, I need to quit thinking about Call of Duty. I'll be close my eyes, and I'm like, I need to quit. <laughs> it's because, uh, but yeah, I watch you guys, and, and I feel like I learned some shit for sure, but I'm trying to think when the first time I saw you play. Definitely a few years ago. It was um, definitely during, like, kind of, like, like, the rebirth time period. Yeah, yeah, like that. yeah. Because you're on YouTube? Or I was on you, Twitch, and then I moved to YouTube about a, a okay. year and a half ago. So you probably saw me on Twitch. Yeah, I think I saw you on Twitch. But yeah, I love, I love, man, I fucking love gaming. <coughs> that shit's so fun. I actually quit for a year when I fought, and I never thought I'd quit. And then I quit. I didn't game for like probably a year. What Call of Duty was that there? Um, this was recent. This was 2021. I quit for a year. I'm just like, I just, it, it was when uh, Caldera. It, Is that Caldera? Yeah, was that? yeah, 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 yeah. And. uh because Elena was, Elena was like one. So it was like a couple years ago. And I was just like, I, I don't know. I just it was playing too much. So I quit for a year and I didn't think I'd ever play again. And Tim, my coach, he's addicted to, he's way worse than me. He sucks. <laughs> but he jumps on with the boys and they'll play like kill races. Yeah. It was like 2v2, loser has to pay uh, a yeah. $5 Venmo. Dude, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, so yeah. fun. Bro, bro, yeah. But they do that. And he's like, dude, just get on. You won't regret it. I'm like, God, I'm nervous. I don't really want to. And I did once, and then I fucking did bro, back hooked, on, hooked back right on. instantly. So now I'm back on the grind, but um, it's just so fun. What it's, is it about Call of Duty that you love so much? Like it, like just the gunplay? Is it just like what? What makes you so addicted to it? Because for me, there is this. Well, yeah, go for you. you know, for me, off rip was just the nuke chasing. 
I mm. loved going for a nuke. Yeah. It was like addicting. Oh, yeah. What COD was that that it started with? Uh, it was MW2. I got addicted in Modern for 3, just chasing it. I would wake up at like 4 a.m. and just chase the nuke. Yeah. Was that, that the 25 kills was? streak? Is that 20, the, it was 25. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. 25. Is that how Nuke Squad started? Yeah, in 2019, we all would just nuke race Damn. each other. So that then and then like yeah, we just kind of became Nuke Squad. I that's wasn't so. even good enough to ever be able to have that dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> Chase a nuke. Yeah. You want one off a nuke? Yeah. Like that's like our that's yeah. our stuff. Yeah, fuck. Um, I don't. I th there's some other strategy on there. I don't know what what's a, why I'm so why I just want to play so much. I I like the challenge of it too. Like I was telling you, like I could run with the boys that aren't as good and get a bunch more kills than I get now. But I like playing with the good guys and just even if I get one or two kills a game and I can fucking res my teammate when they're down oh, yeah. they're like that was a sick smoke play I'm like ha yeah yeah yeah, yeah, like, ah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I'll yeah, fucking yeah. have three smokes on all time a fucking muni like I, I don't know what it is like just playing it, it's yeah I don't know the strategy behind it too is underrated like it's just like not not a, just a dumb video game it takes thought like you gotta yeah, for sure you gotta know what you're doing and I don't know I just fucking when, when do you think you kind of peek out on I know the pros are like fucking young, right? Like Yeah, I mean the top guy is probably like you're you're probably your best gaming wise, I would say between 19 and 23 is when you're like at your Damn, peak. so it's a quick like quick. Damn, it's 19, quick, 20. man. And like I mean, you I even see younger players now are just lit every year there's somebody new, you're just <sighs> like, yo, like what is he Insane. doing? And they're all young too. Fortnite's a little different. You're your best when you're like 15 to like That's 19. That's wild. You're at your peak. That's crazy. Fortnite takes so much, like Bro, way more. Than I remember when Booga won the tournament in, in New York. I was there because I was oh, playing. With the, they had like a celebrity pro am, 50 people, celebrity, 50 pro. And I was on Courage's team. And it, like then the next day was the, the real tournament. And I was there when Booga won like three million dollars or whatever yep. it was for in New York. I was like, "What the three fuck?" Three mil off video games. It changed like everything. Like sixteen, bro. Changed everything. I was like, "What the <laughs> fuck?" To watch this little fucking kid, and I was like, "Holy shit!" That that blew my mind. Just being a part of that whole thing. And Fortnite's still going, bro. Yeah, That's no, crazy. Yeah, no collapse. build Fortnite. Is, do they even have build right now? They do. You get like, but oh, it's okay. mainly like sweaty. Like that's what you go go try. Yeah. Remote. No builds is for like it's like calm or like casual. Uh, like I would play it. We would yeah. play no builds. Dude, building was fun. I, I never was really good at it, but that shit, if you could hit a nice little clean edit, fucking pop someone with a double pump a bow and then close that window, you feel <laughs> like the man. <laughs> or put someone in a box trap. Oh, dude. That shit was fun. But the war the the uh Fortnite, what was it called? Where you just get in the like different game mode? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Um, they're like the private matches with the codes like the and stuff. Creative? Box yeah, the creative box ones. Box battles and all box that. Box battles. Yeah. That shit was fun. That's yeah, fire. no, that, that shit was one. But Fortnite was, pro, was in the peak. I would have probably said it's by far the best game I've ever played, hands down. But now I'm back on Rebirth or uh, Resurgence. I'm like, fuck, that's hard to beat too. So Rebirth, you say, is at the top of your list. Give me your top three maps. Yeah, Rebirth, Rebirth is like the number one. I fucking love that. I never, I don't, I didn't like big map as much because I would die more and I would just be <laughs> yeah. sitting around and if I was playing with my buddies like they suck so they don't have money to res me so yeah. then it's like alright now it's a 20 minute game if it gets to the end and they're yep. fucking hiding in the bush so <laughs> I like Resurgence because I just keep coming back so Rebirth hands down was my favorite I really I'm not what is it Fortune's Keep right now yep, like yeah, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm starting to, it, it grew on me I fucking didn't like it too much but definitely it's grown on me um, those are only two I can't even really remember off top you like Verdansk uh, or like I, you said you kind of die a little I, bit, I just yeah. died too much and I was like fuck I just played the smaller maps but there was a time where it was big maps and we were fucking it was fun for dance wasn't too bad what about Vondel you like Vondel Vondel which one's Vondel it's I'm all rooftops to... it's all buildings okay it's like 70 players that, or something like that That's yeah that's one they have on right now too right Vondel yep. and yep. I think yeah yeah Vondel I played that I don't mind that one too but but rebirth, I'm yeah. If they bring that shit back, that's gonna be next level. Yeah, I'm right. fucking hyped for it's that. It's crazy shit. that you said you've been streaming for like seven years. Yeah. How did that start? Like, was it while you were still fighting? Like, how did you get into content creation? Yeah. So I. Uh, that's a good question. I'm trying to think. I remember I was at. Was that my apartment? I think we were just at a little apartment, and uh, I just I'm trying, or maybe I was when I first bought my first house, like right when I got in the UFC. Like 2017. Oh. I was like, fuck, dude, I'm gaming so much. And now that I have like a little bit of a platform with the UFC and I'm starting to get followers on Instagram, it's like I'm already gaming. And like, oh, you can make a couple thousand bucks a month gaming? Are you Why not? like, that's a lot at that time. I'm like, are you, I can make $2,000 gaming? Are you kidding me? Like, yeah. that blew my fucking mind. <laughs> I remember I made $100 the first month and I was like, 
what the fuck? But it's something you already do. Bro, so you it's just, something yeah. I already do. I sent a picture to my dad. Like, I was in the USC. I just got in the USC at the time when I think I made my first couple hundred bucks on stream. And I sent him a picture. I'm like, game and haha, I told you or something. Like, I told you, <laughs> motherfucker. Because was, he was always giving me shit. Like, you guys need to go outside. Because I have two other brothers, too. We, we would, bro, we would, I probably have some sick pictures on my Facebook, like, way back in the day with the setup where you got oh, the picnic man. fucking table. Each, I have our own consoles. Land party. Yeah, and we land had the party, boys man. come over. Bro, we would game for, you know, we wouldn't go to sleep. I remember waiting outside of like Hastings when the new Call of Duty came out and fucking getting it and going home and trying to prestige. Damn, and like, I was uh, a hard wait, remember what that was? Prestige? Uh, was that Modern Warfare 2? I, it might have been that one. Yeah. I, don't, I don't remember. Fucking, but I, I literally have played all of them. Like, I remember when, was it called Ranked? Ranked play back in the day. Oh yeah, they had ranked play in Black Ops too. Black they Ops, did. Yeah, 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 that, that one. Was I remember insane, that was dude. crazy. Yeah, I remember doing that. But yeah, we'd stay up, dude. My my sleep schedule used to be so fucked from Call of Duty. That's one thing. Like once I started, I actually listened to this podcast on Joe Rogan. It was Matthew Walker, the sleep scientist. This was around the same time I started streaming. Actually, like because I remember listening to it at that house. That changed the way I slept. Like, I'm like, F I cannot fuck up my sleep. Sleeping yeah. will fuck up your so testosterone, will fuck up your entire life. So I, I, cause I used to love streaming at night. Yeah. Like, bro, get, throw some fucking Hot Pockets and pizza rolls like back in the day <laughs> and stream <laughs> all, like, our game all night. That used to be my favorite. But, uh, yeah, once I started getting my sleeping schedule dialed in, I had, I, my, my gaming schedule changed completely, so... Yeah, that's awesome. I want to ask you. I said like you made a hundred bucks off your first check yeah. on Twitch. What about your first check of UFC? What, how much you make off that? So, so the first, because when you're fighting as an amateur, you're you're not making shit. Like for me, I was always like an entrepreneur. I was always trying to sell shirts, like shitty t-shirts, sugar shirts. Like people would support locals. People would support us because you're not making money off fights as an amateur. Turn pro. I think my first pro fight, I made like 800, 800 which is a lot for. Uh, first pro fight like you, 1600 does a lot for first pro fight but it was because i had so much support in montana mm -hmm. and uh, i was able to sell tickets and stuff there so 800 800 was like my first pro fight to get into the usc on the contender series i'm pretty sure it was five thousand to show five thousand to win so wow. you win that you make ten thousand dollars that was my biggest payday i was like holy fuck bro i just made ten thousand dollars that's insane once you get signed to the ufc everyone pretty every, pretty much everyone starts out of the same contract 10 and 10 and a lot of people's contract goes up by like two thousand each fight. So you make so my first fight, I think I made twenty thousand, um, twenty thousand dollars. And then I was in a position because I was coming off the contender series. I already had kind of had a little name for myself. Yep. I was doing good. I had some sweet knockouts. I was able to renegotiate my contract after my first fight, which is pretty rare in the UFC. Like they, you know, they go you do ten to ten, you sign up five fight contracts. You go ten to 10, 12 to 12, 14, 14, 16, yeah. like kind of like that. And uh, so I was able to renegotiate after my first fight. So I was able to make, I think, 20 and 20 in my second fight. So I made 40000 plus I got a $50,000 fight in the night bonus. <clears throat> that was when I broke my foot. Broke my foot in the third round, was hopping on one foot for Had three like minutes. Had to up against the cage, right? Like uh, yeah, the yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. foot was broke. And uh, so I got a $50,000 fight of that night. So I made 90000 so, and, and plus a little bit of sponsorship you get with the UFC. What so, a payday. That was like yeah. my first 100000 I think it was like, it ended up being like 97500 which is weird to remember. But that was like my first time I made 100000 I made six figures-ish. And I was like, what the fuck? That was crazy. And then uh, my next fight, so after that fight, broke my foot. Took, so that was 2018. Took two years off. Came back 2020. Uh, 2020, I think I made, I was able to renegotiate again. I made 2020. I think I made 40 and 40. Or something like that. So I was able to renegotiate quite a bit, which is rare because a lot of, of your people. Branding, though, like because not just you of, yeah. fighting, but like yep. overall, like yeah. like you built up a brand outside that like, yeah. sells tickets. One hundred percent. It's like that's your fighting style that like aids that a little bit, like the knockouts and stuff like that. A hundred percent. If yeah, you're boring, sure. they're not. They'll be like, no, you're on a fucking contract. You're on exactly. a five fight contract. Fight out your contract, and then we'll talk. Yeah. Like that's the majority of fighters. I was in a really, really good position and I had a really good relationship with UFC. Word. I just, like again, I'm going to Vegas tomorrow. I'm sitting down with Hunter and Dana. I, love I, it, bro. I do that. I don't have a manager. One more time. I don't have. We'll see. I don't. This. This. I don't know. We'll see. I. I feel like because I just re renego. I was able to renegotiate after uh, when I fought for the title, won the title, was able to renegotiate going into this fight. And uh, so I've, I've renegotiated quite a bit, but this next trip I'm going to UFC is not going to be necessarily as much numbers as more so, you know, what's next, game plan, you know, I told you motherfuckers, because I've been telling them for a long time, bro, every time I have a conversation with them, 
I'm like, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to like, I'm going to be big. Over. I'm going to do it. I'm going to take over the game. And they've always believed in me. They're like, yeah, but, but they're, but I hear that from a lot of people. So like, sure. yeah, we'll see. But I'm like, You're doing it, bro. yeah, I'm doing that like shit. Higher, bro. And then even speaking about just like on a financial tip, like, Obviously, you've had a couple big paydays. Like, oh, yeah. What are some, like, investments that you're looking forward to that or that you've already done? Uh, I got I got six houses right now, so I'm just kind of doing the real estate thing. I love it. It's amazing. Yeah, great, man. yeah I'm, doing, I'm just doing that right now. Um, I got some money in some stocks, like a financial advisor yeah. that's playing with some money Definitely. for me. Um, I'm going to buy some more land out around here. I'll yeah. probably build. I want to build, like, start building a compound to where I have, like, my mom— uh, Danny's mom, Tim and Mariah are gonna wanna I want them to live out here. I want to have like a dope compound out it's here. A dream, bro. That's yeah, dope. Dream. that's hard. So, um, but I also want to eventually go get into my own. Like, I haven't figured out what it's gonna be, and it has to make sense. Like, what do you, you know? Like Logan and KSI did Prime. It's yeah. fucking smashing it. Uh, Nelk Boys did Happy Dad. I actually have part equity in Happy Dad too. So Happy awesome. Dad's awesome. fucking absolutely crushing. But there, uh, there's gonna be something, and I haven't thought of it yet. But uh, you know, take that that I own equity in a big a majority equity and do do something like that. So I'm gonna I'll invest into that. I haven't figured out exactly what it's gonna be. Whether it's gonna be supplements, a supplement line, okay. um, the sugar merch. My sugar shop is fucking absolutely crushing it. So that's another another revenue wet stream. But uh, yeah, I I feel like real estate right now is kind of where I put a lot of my money. Yeah, that's awesome, man. This is a question for everybody. Is uh, what you spent your first check on, like yeah, from, t- from Matt is a big TikToker and yeah. just overall content creator. Yeah, so yeah. I want to go around and just yeah. ask, like, what you spent your first check on? Yeah, training definitely. from yeah. YouTube, for UFC. Sure. Yeah, so mine, I mean, it was kind of funny. It was literally just this January was really my first ever Fire. big check Good from shit. TikTok. And the first thing I did was get out of debt. I paid all my credit hey, cards, there you go. which Smart. is huge. Smart. So Smart. I'm shit. proud of myself no. for that. Yeah, Good zero, awesome, zero dollars to the credit card and. Uh, now we're here next to Sean O'Malley. Yeah, oh, let's go. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. Love it. My first one was, I think, I think I bought that uh, the slingshot, those Polaris slingshot with yeah. the w- one wheel on the, oh, the front. No way, no, yeah. One wheel on the back. Uh, that was, I still got it. I think I got that, like, when I f- won my first UFC fight, and uh, it was like $20,000. I got that, and I was fucking pumped. <laughs> That's, yeah. That's awesome. My first ever check was two dollars from youtube and i bought a double <laughs> <laughs> that's why no way that's why i was able to transfer YouTube. to my account buy mcdouble and the mcdoubles now are like two dollars that's but back crazy then, a dollar or 99 hard. cents so what did you have to do to get that two dollars like uh it went to straight to paypal because i connected to youtube and then i just transferred to my bank account and <laughs> i saw it and i said it said from youtube <laughs> i said i said we're up I sent McDoubles on me. I bought myself a McDouble. Yeah. I bought my roommate a McDouble. Yeah. Yeah. That's loyal. Right. Took the Always boys out. Always been loyal. Always, That's man. one thing I'll stand. Always <laughs> been loyal. And then, uh, like, the big check that I got, my first ever one, I um, bought my mom a car. Fire. That's hard. I, I was using that. hers to go back and forth to college. It was, like, a little 94 Corolla. Hey. So I bought her a car so I could just take over that That's one. That's dope. I love it. That's dope. My first, uh, I think it took me, like, a year and a half when I got to L.A., and I figured, like, yo, I'm doing all right. Um, I bought myself my old Benz, the CLA 250. Yep, okay. And I was like, oh, you couldn't tell me nothing, bro. Ooh, yeah. I, was, I was feeling it. It hits different, man, when you know, when you, uh, money that you like, it's all on you. Uh-huh. You, know, you don't yeah. have to rely on anyone. Yeah. Just you grinding. Yeah. And then you get to like, you know, it just hits different. Yeah, that first does. check hits different. It does. It does. It's weird. I've, I've, Cause I've always been like an entrepreneur. I've always been good at saving money. But it's weird. Like the more money I make, the less. You want rich, to splurge I'm like, I, don't, yeah, I got yeah. everything. Yeah. It's like when I had a couple hundred thousand, I'm like, what do I want? I'm going to get a chain. And I got the olives. I'm like, I got everything I need. I still yeah. will get some shit, but it's nice giving, giving people like, like I gave my mom 50,000 last year. I gave Danny 50,000 oh, last yeah. year for Mother's Day. Like that feels good. By helping my mom like pay off her house, doing like shit like that feels way better than, yeah. than spl- spending money on yourself. Facts, yeah. yeah. And I love how humble you are. Like, bro, you like brought us here to your home and it's, it's so calm here, bro. Yeah, it's it's it. definitely not like Scottsdale or Phoenix. It's out it's out here, which I love. Like I need that to do what I want to do, which is to be the shit. best ever to do it, to be talked about like a Muhammad Ali, like a you know, Bruce Lee or you know, even a Connor McGregor. Like for me to do that, I gotta be out here, bro. I can't be fucking around with you know chicks and you know, partying like that shit just not even I guess fun but it's not even that fun once you've realized once you've been around like true peace like like what are you what are you chasing 
you almost just crave peace when you're partying, doing all that stuff. You just want, you want that peace. And that's what I get out here. And, and, uh, my partying right now is gaming. Like that's my, that, it's like my two, three that. hours is, is like, and it's healthier than me going out all night, going to that club, getting for drunk, sure, hungover. Yeah. It's like, I'd rather just game for a couple hours. Like that shit's f- stream. It's something about bro going live. And you see the people start coming in. You see the people that are in every day too. It's like, bro, that is different. That's oh, a yeah, drug it's itself. Yep. Seeing the Twitch fan, I'm like, what the fuck? It's so fun. Streaming's awesome, man. Just to be able to like, you build like. Obviously, you have your UFC fans, but when you stream, yeah, like they, for them to go out of their day to click and watch you for like hours on yeah. end just to game and vibe, like it's just like a, it's a genuine family, bro. Yeah. You, like you said, you notice names that come back on a daily basis. Daily. It's crazy too, cause I'm like I'm not even I'm not even like they're not watching for my skill, bro. I'm not that. I'll hit a snipe here one, every once in a while, but they're <laughs> they're there for the, you know, the, the bullshit, the talking, especially cause they can hear the other people on the mics. They can they can hear the conversation. They're just hanging out, like cause that you know. So they enjoy that, which is cool. But yeah, something about streaming that's just fucking. I love that shit. I gotta for the most part, like I was telling you guys, my morning routine, like for the first hour hour and a half i don't i'm not on my phone i'm not i'm not but i instantly i wake up and i'm like i want to stream like i want to fucking hit a coffee and go hit it live but i make <laughs> i force myself to do my morning routine taking out like this morning I, can't, I made coffee or i did all my stuff my pmf machine did that for 40 minutes uh stretched on the red light for a bit let my chickens out all that and uh then i came in here and hit hit some assault have you ever fucking hit sprints on those assault yeah. bikes always have uh my clients do like three sets of 12 seconds on 10 seconds yeah. off like maximum effort and yeah i did i did three rounds of that today too I, I rode the the stationary bike for 20 minutes just to warm up get a sweat and then i did sprints the 10 seconds on 20 seconds off three rounds of that yeah. just got a good workout i'm not obviously that i fought eight days ago nine days ago whatever it is so i'm not trying to fucking die but get a good workout workout in yeah yeah and then fucking went and gamed i was like or i had breakfast fresh eggs fucking had some uh beef bacon you ever have beef bacon uh, that's just slap bro that sounds crazy beef better bacon. than turkey bacon bro it, i feel like it is i i love turkey bacon. i love pork turkey but this beef but is it different i think because i've never really had it and i've only had it a few times it's fucking good but i had some of that this morning fucking Got online, game for like three hours, knew you guys were coming, was pumped for you guys to come out. Oh, that's fucking, awesome. yeah, it was a good bro, ass you. day, bro. I don't think people, I definitely got to touch on this, bro, because, you know, I think maybe some high level fighters get it, but like a lot of your fans and a lot of just, you know, overall people don't understand how intentional you are, like with your routine and your mindset. Like, bro, you're, you're set in your head that, like, bro, all the great things that you want to accomplish are real and they're tangible things, bro, and you want to work towards. You feel what I'm saying? Whatever it takes to get there. And, like, bro, it's admirable. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah. I mean, I'm yes, just setting my attentions each day. Like, what I need, especially in camp. Like, what do I need to do today? What do I need to do, not just today, but this session? Because I'll have a session in the morning. I'll have a session in the afternoon. Like, <clears throat> what do I have to do this session? And bringing the, that kind of intention to each session and, and getting the most out of it is fucking huge. Rather than just going kind of just like, all right, I'm just going to go. Just get it over with. Just, yeah, it comes down to mindfulness. I got into meditation. <clears throat> I don't even, it's weird talking about meditation because it's like fucking, it sounds like a weird word and you just picture someone sitting there and ball of shit. But that med- uh. meditating, learning how to meditate completely changed my life. Just being more aware of my thoughts, more aware of my emotions. And I feel like that's really kind of what, I've always been able to perform even when I didn't know how to meditate. Or, but learning how to meditate and then taking that to performing, I feel is like why I can always show up, why I know how to show up each time. And, uh, but yeah, I do a morning at meditation every single morning. I did 21 minute one this morning and it's fucking people are like, how do you do it? What do you do? I'm like fucking YouTube, 20 minute meditation, a yeah. guided one, play it and fucking close your eyes. Let your brains, oh, yeah, let your, bro, let you're, think. You're kind of different like, with it, bro. Like even like when you were fighting Cheeto last fight, bro, I seen you just stop and breathe, but oh, your yeah. eyes are shut. And I see you do it all the time yeah. in your videos. It's yeah. like any high stress situation. You just shut the eyes and meditate like yep. in functional settings, bro. It's insane. I just feel my, like, when I'm doing that, I'm just feeling my breath into my belly. Just kind of like, when when you close your eyes, you can, it's easier to go inside. And like, and uh, so, yeah, I do that a lot, especially in those kind of moments. Just feel my breath. Because if you're feeling your breath, actually feeling your breath, not just like, but if you're really feeling it, like expand your body, it's like you're not thinking as much. You're not letting your thoughts aren't running around. You're not thinking about, fuck, what you're just like feeling. So I feel like I've just been able to get better at that. I've been doing that. Probably seven, level. eight years too. And uh, 
Yeah, I think that that could change a lot of people's lives, but most people don't have any discipline. They're yeah. just like, ah, I'm not, I'm gonna not. They'll do it for one day and then won't do it the next day. But uh, it's insane, bro. And you do it often. You do it during yeah. fights. You do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? During your YouTube videos, like yeah. you do it often. I haven't seen you take the one bag and you blow your, you just breathe your own air yeah, for a minute. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's insane. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? What that, is that? Yeah, this is. A, I forget what it's called. This it's breath like a bag. balloon. Yeah, my strength and coaching. Uh, Brandon Harris, strength yeah. and conditioning coach. He he got it for me. Um, it's like just kind of like a long exercise, but also you can hold it like a CO2 tolerance. If you hold the top of it and you're breathing in and out your same air, um, it's just like, I, I don't know. I, you can play with your breath. Like it's like a game in different inhale holds, different exhale holds. Um, you can, yeah, just play with your breath. So I just do that sometimes and it, it, you get high on your own supply here. Wim Hof talk yeah. about it. It's like you can just get you get like kind of high, like a dizzy feeling, like a but very present feeling. So Crazy. it I'm is weird. Saying, yeah, you know what I'm saying people don't understand. Like, bro, he does so many things just because he knows it's gonna like help. Give him, him a give you help. a little bit yeah. of that. Yeah, bro. I was listening to his nutritionist, mm -hmm. um, Dan. Correct. Yep, Big Dick Dan Garner. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was hearing him talk. Like, bro, even the reasons uh, he has you eat like a cup of blueberry every morning yeah. is because of like the cognitive brain function. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, like your brain was like sixty percent fat. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was like, dude, it translates directly to you being a fighter. Yeah, yeah. Dan's Insane. the fucking man. Yeah, bro. Yeah. So I'm, obviously, we're seeing you like mature compared to when you first started, bro. I'm curious how having like a daughter changed your life. Like, how did that motivate you? Like, you go into the ring a little bit when you have a kid. I feel like you go into the ring a little bit different. Like, yeah. I'm fighting for something. Facts. So I, I've known I wanted kids forever. I remember being in middle school, like dumping this chick, but she's like, I don't want kids, and I'm like, <laughs> fuck this bitch. I can't date her. I want, I, like, I wanted to be a dad for a long time. I want, I don't, for whatever reason, I always wanted kids, and then. uh Elena was born. She was an oopsie. Like, it was not on purpose. Mm. It was like, oh, well, here we go. I guess we're, it's happening. I was yep. like, so I think 26 is how old I was when, when I first had her. But I, it was nice because financially I was good. Yeah. That's like the number one stress having a kid. Like, fuck. Like, I got to, that they're expensive. Yeah. Uh, so financially I was good. And then like everything in my career was going well. So I was like, and I was, it was like perfect timing. It actually, I, I don't know. I believe in higher powers and all this stuff. I'm like, bro, someone's guiding my yeah, life, definitely. bro, because <laughs> sure. I was, you know, 26 years old, making a good amount of money, starting to become famous. I'm like, that was a, that's a dangerous combination. Like, look at yeah. Ryan Garcia. I feel like he's truly fucked from made too much money. He's too famous. Ego. He's f like, I I don't think I was on that path, but I was. I'm like, fuck. I want. I was like in partying that time, but having Atlanta completely grounded me, kept me just fucking dialed, and. uh yeah, there's nothing like it. Like sleeping with her every night. Like people are like, oh, does she still sleep in your bed with you? I'm like, hell yeah, I yeah. want her to. Because there's gonna That's be a time awesome, where bro. she doesn't yeah. want him anymore. Doesn't want it, yeah. So if I can cuddle with her, fucking, I love that. Wait, wait, the jet flies over. We're in the war zone. Oh yeah, right we didn't now. tell him. Yeah, we're, we're on the war fucking zone. war zone. I got a. Uh, <laughs> Someone called a precision base. on here. Someone yeah, called a precision real. airstrike. <laughs> God damn. You speak about it often, bro. Like even I'm like, bro, what made you move way out here in the middle of nowhere? You're like, bro, because I think it'd be dope for my daughter. Yeah. After you won your last fight, or yeah, I think it was your last fight. It was like, yo, daddy just won a lot of money for you. Like, yeah. Bro, like, it's like the center of everything you do, bro. That's dope. Hundred percent. Atlanta's my entire life. Like I don't really care to travel. Like, it's like, I don't, there's, it's just, point. if I'm not around her, I'm like, what the fuck am I even doing? Like, yeah. there's times where I need to go do business, you know, I need to go here for this, yeah. this, for that. Like, I'm going to Vegas tomorrow, but I'm going to be back the same day. So I'm like, not even that gone. I went to Miami on Sunday. She came, she flew in on Tuesday. So I wasn't away from her that long, but it's like fucking, once you have a kid, like, what else is there to do? Like, being a, like, I got to be around her. And it's, uh, yeah, having, having the farm. Like watching her grab the eggs from the chicken coop is so gotta be the coolest. Dude, it's something, yeah. something in our DNA too. Because you know when you grab them, when people found out about eggs, how perfect is that shit? Like back in the day, like fucking protein every day. Yeah. Like, I bet they were like chickens are badass. Like so something about it in our DNA, they're like it just feels good when you grab an egg. Yo, how highly he speaks about their chicken eggs made me feel like, bro, am I missing a chicken coop? Like, is that something? I think I, I gotta get one. Yeah, I, think I, need I, one. I finally talked, Tim, bro. I got these chickens when they're two weeks old. They don't lay for tw till they're twenty weeks. So I had these motherfuckers for eighteen weeks, just taking care of them, having to. They were just babies, and it was up at the other house, so I didn't have a setup like this. Yeah. So I had them in a Tupperware with a light, yeah. and I had to change their <laughs> fucking shit every day because those motherfuckers shit like crazy. Yeah. And uh, it, there was a it was a hard work raising those chickens, but Tim, I was he was like, bro, your chickens are gonna die. There's no way you fucking raise them. Like we'll see, bitch. But he's finally he's gonna get some. He's getting chickens too. 
but because uh, I, I always I have so much fucking eggs, I give them out like candy. Yeah. <laughs> so I've been giving him eggs. He's like, bro, I gotta get my own chickens, and he you know, so he's finally getting some chickens too. That's sick. Yeah. You kind of talked about like just how expensive kids are. I, my parents can fully. I'm a triplet, so yeah. they try to. So Jesus. imagine, so imagine you have a kid now. Now multiply that by two. Shit. Like have like three. Nah, that's the wildest <laughs> perspective. That's <laughs> even wild. earlier. Like, I always love talking yeah. to you about it. That's, nah, that's wild. Insane, bro. I don't. I mean, I say kids are expensive, but really, I don't fucking know. I feel like they might be. I don't fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, yeah, I, mean, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. But yeah. I just nah, that, that's a blessing, bro. Just... <laughs> that's a blessing that you know what I mean. Like you were 26, your your career was established. Yeah. But for a lot of people, lucky, bro, like it's, it's critical. You know what I mean? That's the number one thing. Like, bro, when we when I get financially stable, it, that's what time it is. Yep. I asked my boy the other day. I'm like, bro, like how does it feel like to be like a father? Mm -hmm. He was like, bro, like you're drowning. You're drowning, but you figure out how to breathe underwater. Yeah, and, bro, that was like the craziest wow. analogy. I ever heard in my life, bro. I, I'm, telling, I'm like, don't fucking get your girl pregnant. Don't get a girl pregnant if you're not ready. If you're not financially, you're never going to be ready, but if yeah. you're not financially, like, able to do it, don't fucking have a baby because yeah. it's not going to fix your shitty relationship. People yeah. are like, oh, I'm going to have a baby. It'll bring us together. It ain't um, going to do shit. You're, it, <laughs> it's just <laughs> like, I'm like, it's just so many people having babies out there that shouldn't be having babies. And then I know so many people that are like, bro, you need to have a baby. They're like, ah, I don't really care to. I'm like, fuck. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, there's, I always tell, like, kids, especially young kids listen to this shit or watch the stream that are 16, 17, 18, 19. They're like, oh, I don't want to have a kid. It's like, it, it'll completely change your life, hopefully for the better. I mean, mine for the better for sure. But if you're struggling. I can't imagine fuck. having a kid like at, like, 18, 19. Bro, bro I, was a, I was a goofball. Oh, bro. My mom had me super young. My mom had me at 16, bro. That perspective really? is insane. Wow. Dude, at it's 16. so weird. No, I'm a, just thinking. Like, I was a literal fetus, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm just thinking about the shit I, I didn't know or that I thought I knew, bro. Don't know anything. At 16? Yeah. Bro. No, I don't even have a bank account. Bro. I barely had a no, phone. No, no. I barely had <laughs> yeah. a phone. That's what I'm saying, bro. I was on I look at shit texting. different. <laughs> <laughs> I look at shit different, bro, and I, I kind of give my mom, like, so much grace, bro, because, yeah. like, yo, like, she bro. raised me at 16 years old. Like, just imagine you being 16. Like, you know what? Yo, I'm going to go through with this. And, and That's crazy. Work. And you turned out fucking, obviously, seemed turned out pretty good, dude. But a majority of people that have kids at 16, like, those little kids probably had kids at fucking 16, Facts. and they're probably not doing good. Yeah, so awesome. That's Facts. crazy. That's what impressive. about you boys? You guys, you guys thinking it's in the car? My boy Matt's married. Yeah, married for two years. Damn. Um, definitely Congratulations, definitely do want kids, but I don't know when the right time is. I'm going to keep grinding for a bit. What are you, 25, then, you said? 25, yeah. Like, like you said, you, you feel like there's not a right time. It's just yeah. more so, yeah. I mean, I, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like it's just... I think it happens yeah. when it needs to. <laughs> It'll happen when it needs to. But you, you got a girl? Yeah, I do, yeah. Nice. I've been together for about eight months now. So okay, okay. We've been rocking. Kids, I don't know. Yeah, that's a little I, I early. I do want kids, but I don't know when. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, for guys, too, like, we don't have to worry about it as much, like, we can, our nuts are fucking butt. We can bust that's, when we're 60 and have a baby. The girls are like, they're got to be, you know, 32, 33. You got to start thinking yeah, about it. They got a clock. Yeah. They got a clock. Man. Yeah, bro. It's pressure. I, I get it, bro. It's pressure. So one of the celebrities just had a kid at 80. Uh, bro, what's this? Yeah, name? fuck. I know. I saw that. You know what I'm talking about? What? Yeah. 80. Yeah, it's I, like, I, a, uh. Well, I can't think of it either. My Do you know the, the celebrity had it? I know what it was, bro. He's like an old. He was like in like uh, Goodfellas and like stuff like that, like that type. Like of a gangster almost. I feel like. No, yeah, that's, he is. That's insane, bro. Eighty. Yeah, his, his his girl was like twenty five. That's fucked up. That's, <laughs> yeah. Because unless you live, I mean, I guess if you could live to a hundred, that means you're, you know, you. That's push. Yeah. Robert De Niro. Yeah. No way. Oh, damn. Eighty, bro. No way. Eighty-two. That's fine. How old was his girl? Yeesh. Bro, I'm gonna I had to be like 25, nuts too, 26. I don't know if he's a legend or is that out of pocket. That's out of pocket for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Yo, tagging at 80 is crazy. Yo, tagging sit down. At 80 yo, sit crazy. But he's at a goat for even being able to make that work. You feel what I'm saying? Like, it's this. What a he's legend. 80. That is wild. Even from a health standpoint, like, bro, like. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's wild. Cardiovascular. I'm curious, do you, do you watch movies? Are you into movies? I like, I, I, I like to get into like series. I like, try to get into a good series. I fucking like. Love getting into a good one. I, I haven't been into anything lately. Last thing I was just absolutely obsessed with was Survivor. Ooh. Like binged watched like every fucking season of Survivor for like eight months. That shit you never seen it? Never it's seen crazy. it. It's crazy. You should that shit. Good? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I, it, it, yeah, it's it's fucking that one I was obsessed with. What's your but, favorite show of all time? Uh all time, I'd say Prison Break's gotta be up there. Oh my God. That yeah. shit go slapped. I watched go that a few that. times, bro. That shit was hard. I was like 
One of the map got revealed on his whole, it's oh, on his yeah, body. Michael yeah, Schofield is him. Bro. Him. Yo, isn't he gay in real life? I don't know. I don't know. I heard that the other day. <laughs> I don't know. Randomly. I think, I'm pretty sure he's gay in real life. No, nothing wrong with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, <laughs> just like a fun fact. Yeah, it's a fun little fact. <laughs> he was but, uh, savage. Yeah, yeah, that, that move, that, that show bag. was crazy. The guy that would make you hold his pocket. Yeah. Crazy. No, no. Yeah, that shit was Breaking, Breaking Bad. Bad's yeah, up there. Yeah, Breaking Bad's up there for sure. Game of Thrones, have you seen Game of Thrones? Never have. No I got a lot way. of shit for now. You so haven't even started. It's yeah. tweaking, bro. Have you seen Dune 2 recently? No, I haven't. You got to watch Is that one good? It's I don't so even good. know what Dune 1 is. Oh, you got to watch Dune You got to watch Dune 1, bro. He hates movies, by the way. And you so, like yeah. these so this is bro, huge. Bro, I stamp it. Like, I genuinely, it was, bro, we went back. I watched it twice the next the day. I'm like, yo, Chris, really? you want to run it back, so bro? And I went good. to the movies again and watched it Damn, again. Damn. Dune okay. 1 and 2, stamp it, bro. It's yeah, no, yeah. I'll, I'll definitely check it out. I like getting into a good uh, good series, a good movie. Uh, I definitely try to watch. I, I, you know what I started last night, actually, is Stallone. Family Stallone. So Sylvester Sylvester Stallone's. It's like him. a reality show of his family. Yeah, him yeah. and his hey. three hot ass daughters and his wife. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's actually good. I, I only watched two episodes and it was like, that shit's interesting. It's an interesting life. Besides UFC, like what are other sports you watch? Um, dude, I used to be absolutely fucking obsessed with the NFL. Madden playing fantasy. I, you know, I could name every fucking player. I could name most offensive linemen, defensive Damn. linemen. I could name all that shit, dude. <laughs> I used to be obsessed with Madden and NFL. Then when I moved to Phoenix... When I started, when I moved to Phoenix, I completely stopped watching football for like until recently. Last few years, I started watching more. I used to love the Broncos. I would watch like when, when Clinton Portis, Jake Plummer, yeah. uh, oh, Champ so Bailey, okay. John Lynch. Like that was my prime. That was, that was before Peyton. Man. You live in Montana. Yep. Is that yep. like the closest team to you? Almost Denver? No, I don't. Yeah. Uh, Does Montana got any sports? No, teams? Montana got shit. They, they got, got no sports teams. They got a college. They got to have a great like D one double A team wins. Boise State isn't that in? Idaho? Yeah, yeah, they cool. Oh, close, that's Idaho. close. Uh, but like Montana, <laughs> Montana, uh, the Grizzlies, nah, I'm Montana North Grizzlies, Dakota State. Yeah, no, no. Shout out Montana. Yeah, shout yeah. out Montana. Montana, Boise, Montana. Montana. <laughs> Yo, what's uh, what's something fun to do in Montana? Y'all fish, fly fish. See that I didn't grow up doing any of that. I didn't hunt, didn't fish. Like I played. Basketball, football, baseball, soccer all year round. Like we we're just, we we're playing something. But I, I, right now, I, I I've been enjoying watching the NFL. Like last year, I was watching. Uh, it was fun to watch, like individual players more so than teams for yeah, me so. right now. Like watching high level, like Patrick Mahomes do his thing, like under pressure, not come out having not have the best first half, come back, just stay focused, oh, yeah. and and you know come back and win the fucking Super Bowl. That was crazy, bro. Um, so I like watching individual. More so than like the sport, like, I don't really give a fuck who wins for the most part. Yeah. Um. But I like watching high level athletes. Yeah. It's fun. I feel that. I want to ask you. I want to ask everybody, low key, because you know when you're growing up. I mean, I don't know if you always wanted to be a UFC fighter, but like growing up, like but before that, was there anything like you wanted to do before? Bro, I, I NFL. Can't answer this. No NFL. Way. I wanted you want to be, be an NFL, NFL player? so bad. And again, I was in Montana, delusional. Like I did. I didn't no, there was levels to shit. Like, I'd play football, and I'd be like, I'm fast. Like, motherfucker. What yeah, position would you want to, play? Too, like, heavy? Like, he, yeah. Yeah, I played my whole life. But that's the thing. Like, I had so many different phases in my life, bro. Like, early on, like, I thought it was wrestling. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I thought I, I thought I was going places because I was a captain at, in seventh grade. WWE like, type stuff? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> nah. Nah, 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 nah. Bro, on YouTube, I used a video of me wrestling a girl, and it was, like, the most intimidating shit in my life. Oh, she had nothing to lose. Yeah. Like, why would you have me do this? It's a lose lose. It's a yeah, lose lose. So, why real. am I doing it? I was like, bro, I'll go up a weight class. Like, I'm not trying to do this. He was like, bro. So, oh, she was up. in your weight class and you fought her. Bro, go on YouTube. Were you worried about getting a boner? Nah. <laughs> See, I would have worried bro, about I'll that. I tried to put her in yeah. half Nelson and her arm like flipped all the way across her oh, head. Shit. I'm like, yo, it's kind of. My coach was like, yo, turn it down. He's wanted me to get working, but he didn't understand. Yeah, like, bro, up, I have everything ass. to lose right now. Like, yeah. Yeah, like, why am I fighting? Yeah. That's what I'm saying, bro. And I was the captain. He didn't, he disrespected my shit. But yeah, then it was baseball. Went fo went crazy with the baseball shit mm -hmm. and then ended up playing college football, yeah. Damn. Yep. What about you? Fire. Bro, so for me, like, as a kid, do you remember that Adam Sandler movie of the golf? Um, Happy Gilmore. Yes, Happy, Happy Gilmore. Gilmore. So I saw that movie as a kid, and I wanted to be a golfer, but I wanted <laughs> to be like him. Like, I just wanted <laughs> oh, to be, like, a cool guy yeah. with, like, the hockey That's stick. Funny. <laughs> and then as I got older, I got into football, um, so I wanted to go to the NFL, and then Black Ops 2 came out. Oh, shit. And I quit the football team because I was addicted to Black Ops 2. No that's way. Insane. That's a crazy. I feel that. Yeah. That's insane. I, quit, I can't lie I to you. I quit that's football insane. to play Black Ops 2, never went back. And then, yeah. What could have been? It could have been. I can't yeah. lie to you. My story's kind of wild. I was walking down the hallway. Shout out to Javez English, bro. Um, I remember I was walking down the hallway. He was like, yo, Ty, you should try out for the football team. And the season had already started. And I was like, yo, you know what? 
All right, so I went and asked uh, the coach at the time, like, could I play? And, uh, bro, he ended up saying, yeah. Bro, very first stretch, we were doing Frankensteins. Kicked my foot up in the air, my cleat fell off. I was like, yo, fuck this shit. <laughs> <laughs> but I ended up sticking with it, and it was a great experience. But that shit really saved my life, bro. Yeah. I was saying that to you guys earlier. Like, bro, I just wish for my kid, like, sports have taught me so much. Discipline, yeah. like, fellowship, brotherhood. What about you, Chris? Basketball, man. I played basketball since I was five. My dad put me in the YMCA, yep. and uh, I played. He was my coach until I was about 14. And then I played AAU all the way to high school, and then I went to an NAIA. Damn. I'm to play basketball, and then I tore my labrum. So I went up for a rebound, and my arm came out of pocket, and it just got stuck. No. Just genuinely got stuck. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, these drawings, is Chris is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. They're moving. I'm not even kidding. Yo, out of pocket. We might be getting invaded right now. Yeah. <laughs> I think, yeah. So this is how it sounds back in World War II. Like, it's over. You no, know, imagine yeah. hearing that, but that's your enemy. When you hear this, you're low. That'd be no, terrifying. That'd be terrifying. You hear that, but that's your enemy? Oh, you're cooked. Yeah, so I went for a rebound. My arm got stuck out of pocket. Out of socket. And out of socket. See, I said out of pocket. <laughs> <laughs> out of socket. Pocket socket. And uh, <laughs> it was stuck. And I'm like, yo, I can't, I can't move my arm. So I had to like move it around oh, and it like oh. went back in place. And I said, oh, damn. Like, but I thought I was fine. Uh -huh. After that, it just slowly kept easily coming out. Oh. And I went to go get checked it out. Completely oh. tore my labor and had to get surgery. I had to get months. hip surgery on my labor. You get yeah. your teeth knocked out too? Yeah, I got my two front teeth when I was like 14, clean knocked out. Basketball? Oh, Basketball, was big dude, yeah, elbow came oh. down, knocked him ah, clean out. Fuck. What's everyone's like worst injuries that you guys ever had? Torn ACL, That's in soccer. That's fucked. Horrible. Yeah, mine was my Liz Frank surgery on my foot. That one sucked bad. That was like, Is that like a certain bone in your foot? It's like, uh, it's tendons and ligaments. It's on the top, so I have a crazy, pretty crazy scar over the top of my foot. And it just true. like... Yeah, ooh. yeah, that was fucked. I broke my fibia head off, and then I, the most painful was I thought I lost this finger. It got caught in between two face masks, and oh, it just, like, exploded. Bro. I don't like that. Oh yeah, God. so it took, this had, took, like, two years to grow back in, but it was, like, growing sideways. That shit I thought nasty. I lost my finger. It was fucking insane. Wait, so the tip, like, exploded? Yeah, so, like, it was the last play of, like, spring ball, and there was, like, this big-ass O-lineman coming at me, and I'm like, bro, the play's over, so I just, like, went like this, oh, and, like, oh. he was going full tilt, so it was just, like, oh. And just squirted, bro. It was, it was bad. I, I thought injuries, I lost it. Bro. I don't like watching that shit. I don't Me like neither. Bro, don't that's what like I was it. telling you earlier, bro. Like when that shit happened to your foot and it was yeah. flopping around, I'm, I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Yeah, is that, that shit. I don't like shit like that, bro. I get squeamish. Me too. Yeah, I don't like that <laughs> either. But basketball was another one. Like ball, basketball was probably my favorite sport to play because I played baseball. I was good at shortstop. I was really good at hitter too. Baseball I liked. Soccer, I was fucking really good at soccer. Quit playing though, like towards high school. Um, but basketball was like probably my favorite sport to play. What I would you? Who I was gonna ask you real quick? Uh, you got MJ or LeBron? Yeah, who's the greatest <laughs> basketball player of all time? I was actually when I was doing because fight week, I just watch a fuck ton of YouTube because I'm just chilling like yep. all day. I was watching the debate MJ versus LeBron debates, and, and uh, it's fucking hard. I, I never really watch like a game. I'll never sit down and watch a full LeBron game. Obviously, never. I never watched Jordan, but. Uh, I know it's hard to it's hard to argue LeBron just for how many he's still going, bro. That there's something about that to be able to play the longevity of that is fucking so impressive. It's like I feel like that's got to count for a lot, like the longevity. For sure, yeah, that's a, always a good question. I seen you say like one time you're like, bro. I told my friends like, listen, I'm gonna figure this shit out one day, somehow, some way. Um, I'm gonna be famous. Yeah. So, so what was like? You know what? Yeah, bro, it's gonna be fighting. Like, were you just knocking kids out, or it was just? Well, like, I, I remember telling my Buddy, that like seventh grade is before I even I started kickboxing and stuff when I was freshman. Year. So I was like, I was years before I thought I was gonna be in the NFL at that yeah. time. When I told him, I'm, like, I'm gonna be famous, I'm gonna be a, I'm gonna be an athlete, I'm gonna be NFL, NBA, one of the two. I wasn't, I was never even that good. Like I was, I was pretty good, but I delusional. I was just like, I'm gonna fucking make it. But and then kickboxing randomly kind of came into my life, and I was like, what the fuck? I guess this is it. Like I was naturally pretty good at it. You know, NFL, NBA, you gotta be a, you don't have to be a certain weight or height, yeah. but you, I mean, I'm, I, sure, I ain't gonna, yeah. I'm 5'11", 155 pounds, I ain't gonna fucking do shit. So fighting, I was like, oh, okay, there's weight classes, so I'm gonna be, you know, so that made sense, more sense to me, and I started just kind of getting obsessed with that. Yeah. You don't look 155, bro. I probably, I'm probably, yeah, I'm probably about 55 right now. Damn, I wouldn't say that if I just see you walking by, like 170. Yeah, damn. I, yeah, that would suck. And you got all the way down to 135? <laughs> yeah, make 135 on That's the insane. dot, bro. And it's it's fucking like Blake, I uh, he's my assistant. He uh w watched it for the first time, like the weight cut process. It's fucking 
it's scary, bro. Like you lay in there and you're cut weight at that point. You're dehydrated because you're sweating all the water out. You're just breathing. Your heart rate's high. You're hot because you're in the hot tub and then you're under hot blankets. And like I, I'll close my eyes, count. I just count and try. And then like every once in a while, I kind of like open my eyes to make sure I'm still in this reality because you feel like wow. you're dying, dude. It is fucked. It was cool to hear your nutritionist just talk about how well you handled that, though. Yeah. Like, this is you guys' 10th fight together yeah. that just yeah. passed, right? Yeah. So, man, that, that was just amazing. You had nothing but, like, high praise for you. Yeah. And it was cool that, like, I think you were, like, a week out, and then the same fight last year, same amount of time out, you were the exact same weight down yep. to the decimal. He's a legend, bro. Yeah. Yeah, I write Thank all you. my—I journal. It's another thing I feel like it's a huge advantage that a lot of people don't do is I journal all my— my fight camps, write down what I'm doing that day, how far out I am from the fight, what I woke up at, how I slept, what I, you know, did for training that day, if I had any injuries, like I journal all that to just be able to look back on. And yeah, it's crazy. Like when you wake up, I'll be like 142.7 or 142.5 or and I'll be like, damn, that's exactly the weight I was last camp. And it's just nice to know where you're at. I think it's dope that like your coach and obviously yourself understands like just from a science standpoint, your strongest is obviously when you're not at your lowest weight. So you get down to 135, but you don't like to stay there for an extended period of yeah. time. I make I'm, I make 135 an hour before I have to get on the scale. Crazy. And then I get on the scale, 135, and then I was I was 153 like 14 hours later. That's uh, crazy. How is it? it? Is it how much? Like, uh, liquids. Uh, 153. Like yeah, that's what I'm saying, bro. Wow. It comes all the way back. So how much water are you drinking and shit? But you're so deprived, it probably all just stays. Oh, you just fucking, your body just, you, you literally, your body thinks you're dying. Yeah. So when you start drinking, hydrating, it's like it just holds on to all of that. Like you get, yeah, you you gain a lot of weight back from just the liquids itself because you don't, your stomach's so small at that point. Like you don't, you don't want to eat shit. You don't give a fuck about eating. You want do you water. eat anything during that fourteen hours or no? Uh, yeah. Uh, so I'll for the first couple hours, I'm just drinking liquids and then apples, like baby food, applesauce, some some kind of baby food, nothing like hard. For the first few hours, just fucking liquids, liquids, liquids. But you can't drink too fast because it fuck your stomach up. Yeah. Like, bro, rehydrating is such a science. Like, I feel so fucking lucky I have Garner for the rehydration because a lot of people will just fucking, they'll start eating, drink sh fucking. I've seen people drink pop after. I've drink, seen oh, people eat what? Like, no, French toast. Drink soda? But not, maybe not at the highest level. I feel like I'll try to think back. I've seen people do some dumb shit. Like, Jeez. Real dumb Krispy Kreme donuts. You know, let me just... That sounds fire, this. though. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you go... Like, obviously not when you're in camp, but, like, you go just crazy, like, fuck it. it eat until I can't anymore. Oh, God. I have an issue with that. That's the weed, though, yeah, man. That's yeah, the weed. Right. That shit does it to me sometimes. <laughs> smoke, you be smoking hella? Not, 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 like, not nearly as much as people think I smoke. Like, because yeah. a lot of the times I'll make a video, an Instagram video, and be funny as fuck. I'm like, bro, it'd be funny if I was smoking a joint, hitting mitts, or doing something... Yeah. So uh, I pretty much smoke for the most part every night, but I use a vaporizer, uh, like a quality vaporizer that heats the weed up to the temperature that, the, the most healthy temperature. So I'm not fucked smoking out of joints or bongs. That shit fucks you up for real. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the weed, man, that's sometimes, I've gotten a lot better at not just overeating, mm. but sometimes it don't matter how disciplined you are. You fuck, especially if you worked out hard that day, mm. you worked out hard, you, you know, your muscles want some extra food and then you yep. take, you fucking smoke. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll eat till like my stomach hurts. I haven't been doing that nearly as much. Like I used to do that way too often, um, but I don't do that nearly as much. Why do you feel like you don't do it anymore? I think I'm just get. I, I, I'd like to think I'm just getting a little bit more wise. Just I'm like, fuck, okay, I don't really need to do that. Just because all that extra food's just gonna be inflammation. It's For just gonna sure. sit in your back. You're sitting your knee. You're sit, you know, you have a little injury. It's just gonna make take it longer to heal. And like, I gotta fucking get back to work. Like, I got Thanks. Rab's a motherfucker, bro. I that dude yeah. is. He's a dangerous opponent. It's like it's a you know, uh, and I gotta fucking be dialed in. I gotta the whole get time. back to work. Yeah, yeah. for sure. I mean, yeah, with keep everything. speaking life into it, bro. Yep. Keep speaking into it. Like knock this motherfucker the fuck out. Don't That's even let him touch you, yeah. bro. Pour life into it. We we're talking about that the other day, yep. bro. It's power in the tongue, bro. Understand yep. that. And run with that, so bro. She like, said, huh? knock shit up. <laughs> 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 Yo, this motherfucker is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> what like plans do you have coming up? Like obviously the fight, but you know any merch drop streams coming. Any yeah, videos? pretty much, pretty much just streaming every day at this point. Like, yeah, pretty much streaming every day. There's random days I'll just take a day off. Um, but streaming every day, merch drops. Uh, we always, I'll probably do like a 420 drop. Nice. We're working on something right now for a 420 drop. Um, 
UFC 300 is coming up. That's going to be in Vegas. I think I'm going to have an appearance at the at Zook, this club, after oh, nice. in oh, Vegas. Yeah. I've done that a few yep. times. So I'll probably do that, pop by Zook, do an, uh, do an after party there, um, which will be the first time I've partied since the fight. Because after the fight, I went out to 11 in, in Miami. Um, I, I took two shots. I had a shot with Joe Burrow and a shot with Russ. So I was like, oh, yeah, I'm like, those are legends, bro, legends. Yeah. So Russ performed at the after party, which I requested. I was like, yo, can you guys get Russ? Russ, I fucking love Russ. He's Russ is awesome. the guy. It's, it's sick. So uh, I haven't really partied since the after, since the fight, so I'll probably just save it and do one party at the at, after UFC 300 in Vegas. When is that? Uh, April 12th. Okay. As far as UFC 300 goes, what is your favorite fight that you're excited to watch? Like, what is something that you're a geek to see? I, I I'm I am I always talk like I want to be bigger than Connor Bubba Bum. People think I'm like hating on Connor, but dude, I am the biggest Connor fan. I want to see Connor come back. I want to see Connor. That that would. What's the likelihood you think he comes back? I think he'll come back. I think he will. And I I that'll be the most. That'll be what I'm excited for the most. Um, but right now, what am I mostly excited about? Justin Gaethje versus Max Holloway is an absolute fucking That's banger. An insane card. Max is a That's demon. a sweet card. Jamal Hill versus Alex Pajeda. That's the main event of UFC 100, uh, 300. That that's that's a I mean, it's a pretty big that's a big fight. But for the most part, I'm not, I feel like there's not nothing that's really just absolutely crazy. Jake versus Mike Tyson. I feel like I want to be more excited for it. I wish like <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm like imagine Mike Tyson. Imagine if he's forty. That'd yeah, be a little bit more like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How old is he? Fifty-seven. Fifty-seven. Might be fifty-eight tough. when he does it. But up there. I'm still Are excited for that. Facts, you know, yeah, I'll still watch that. Nate Diaz versus Jorge Masvidal's boxing match. That's up there. It's decent. But yeah, as far as huge, massive mega fights, mm -hmm. I, nothing that really stands out. Big fights. Max Holloway, Justin Gaethje's a sweet fight. Yeah. We got. We're going to Great Falls, Montana, back where Tim's from. Um, in the day before the so April eleventh or whatever that Friday, we got a couple up and coming pros fighting in Great Falls that are, so that that'll be fun to go back and watch those then we'll fly from Great Falls to Vegas um for the for UFC 300 so pretty sweet yeah I, I don't that those are my first trips planned as far as like traveling other than going to Vegas tomorrow but uh yeah it's nice usually I travel quite a bit after my fights go to like do a bunch of podcasts and stuff but again it's like now that I have Elena it's like I don't really care to travel I feel like I'm kind of at a point to where like, if you guys want to come out, more than welcome. Obviously, we made this happen, which was fucking, yeah, thank you guys for coming out. But I'm like, I don't really care to travel. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, bro, flying is like fucking a pain in the ass, bro. I'm like, fucking. I was going to say, bro, like, we have to go to one of your fights. Bro, hopefully the next one's in Vegas. Hopefully. Yeah, that'd be tough. Yeah, you definitely yeah, got to go to one, bro. Because have you been to the UFC fights yet? Yeah. Only one. Yeah. The one? Only one. Which one yeah. was that? Do you remember? It was Volk uh, against, he, it's the last one he won. Yeah, year. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think yours was like a DQ. Was it like a nah? Yours wasn't a DQ. Like something had to happen or something. Was yeah. that? Oh, you guys were at that one. Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. I, got, no. I, it, I was no. at that one. Yeah, oh, we were. Oh, we damn. went for the but first. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, ear. Yeah, yeah, it was his eye, right? Yeah, the guy yeah. you were fighting is supposedly stuff. poked him in the eye, brother. I think he's man. I don't know, but that was a no <laughs> contest. Um, but yeah, some of the UFC there ain't nothing like that shit, bro. Oh, bro. Like going to a basketball game was fucking sweet. Going to a football game, sweet. Bro, Going different. to a fight, that shit's different, bro. Well, Y'all are gearing up to really kill each other. Yeah, like, that's like in a cage, <laughs> cage. Yeah. lock that Some gladiator shit, bro. shit, Roman times. And everyone's drunk on the outside, yelling, "Kill him!" It's <laughs> fucking wild, bro. <laughs> yeah, that's that fire, shit's bro. fucking wild. But dude, amazing podcast. Thank you so much yeah. for coming, bro. Anytime. We also have like this really cool tradition with all of our guests, where at the end of the pod, we do like a super quick prayer. All right. So you down for it? Yeah. Fire. Appreciate you. Cool. I got it, bro. Yeah. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for joining us together. Uh, thank you for having our guest today, Sean, invite us out to the beautiful family and uh, his home. Um, Father, I pray for protection over Sean and the rest of the boys here, and I pray that you just guide us well, Father God. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Amen man. Um, appreciate thank it. You, of course, brother. Anyways, guys, that wraps up the podcast with Sean. Thank you for having us, man. It's awesome, bro. Banger, baby. Make sure you guys drop a like on the podcast if you enjoyed. Comment your thoughts on just anything that we talked about. We would love to read some feedback. And also hit that subscribe button to join the lobby, man. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.